This is a Flat Earth Theater production of Fine Tuned Universe, a science fiction radio play by A. Lerman. In our last transmission, Chief Spindler over at Moira Base implied that the radio silence from Earth could be the critical effects of a planetside catastrophe. Meanwhile, Commander Andreas is planning to take the jump ship to a foreign satellite to increase our communication points. Things are starting to smell fishy around here. Stick around. You're going to want to hear what's in store in Chapter 3 of Fine Tuned Universe. Don't wander too far. I'm not going to wander too far. I know you. I know you like to take the scenic route just to get a little more playtime outside. I don't know what you're talking about, Chief. Someone's going to come out here and pave over some of these potholes, you know? Just go to the array and that's it. No getting lost. I'm still in view of the station. You can watch me doing donuts from the window. Oh, for crying out loud. One of these days, Alice. I know, I know. Bang, zoom. That's all well and good, but do your job. Aye, aye, Captain. Jane wants those raws, and I want Jane happy and out of my hair. Gonna eat her words when she sees how much data she's gonna have to wade through. Really? I thought that was what you were here for. No, ro not road trips to who knows where. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been out here? Outside the station? Uh, no. Not particularly. On missions and more? Just really briefly. I rarely need to work outside. You ask? You'd understand if you do. Yeah, maybe. You'd go totally off course too if you did. Spend every second you could out here. Sometimes it's fun, yeah. I'm walking along and I entirely forget where I am. Just like I'm going for a major walk, nowhere special. I go to breathe in the fresh air and actually expect it to not come out of a canister. These things are heavy, too. I guess that I'm even more... You at the first telescope, Dick? You aware there's over a hundred of these things, right? I'm aware. Almost there. You said that five minutes ago. Yeah. Must be going in circles. Oh, and driving, too. We've been a lot of places out on missions since sites are generally as isolated as they come. Light pollution, all that jazz. Lots of places that look just like this. Especially at night, super pitch black like this. Oh sure, in another week it'll look pretty moody when the sun's up, but we get an awful lot when I'm out here. Stars look just the same. We're not far enough away for the stars to look different. No, I know. It, be a shame on a day, yeah. The night's out here. It's night. <laughs> what was that? Uh, little bitty crater snuck up on me. Get back on course. I'm on course. I hit that stupid thing every time. That's how I know I'm on course. And I've got time anyway. Dr. Withers have the feet of the fanny pack up yet? No, she's still fiddling with it. And I've got all the time I want out here. You know what cabin fever feels like, so don't chide me for going for a run while I'm off my leash. Fair enough. Did they miss the window again today? Of course they did. It's the fifth time now. You starting to see what I mean? They're acting really sketchy. They're working hard. And who told you that? Spindler? Very curious. Even when she does get in touch, she's got no new information worth a lick of salt. I trust Spindler. That might be your mistake. Things aren't going awry, and trust is your most valuable commodity. You know her. You've got to notice it. I notice... What? I don't know why she keeps refusing to patch us through to ISS. Could be because they're not actually in touch with the ISS. Could be because they're withholding information to keep us in the dark. Mmm, Bettina wouldn't do that. We've been working together for over a decade now. Me and their whole base. We start going awry and... You've got to stop saying that. You don't know what people are capable of. You don't think she's capable of something nefarious? <sighs> Not unless... Didn't catch that. She's a good radio operator and an honest person, but... 
If they know something more, would it actually be her decision whether to tell us or not? Think she's acting under orders? I just, I don't understand why they'd want to keep us from knowing something. It, it just doesn't make any sense. This is exactly why getting that second satellite window is going to be paramount. Oh, this again. Oh, don't you start. We're doing it today. Don't I know it. And you've been nothing but contrary since we brought it up, but it's been four days now, and we've got no other ideas. So maybe we could get more answers if we could actually talk with them more than every couple of hours. If they choose to talk with us. We've got to try. In your seat, I might make the same exact decision nine times out of ten, but... Dick, I know you don't trust Commander Andreas going up there. Nope. But you've said your piece, and she's got the jump ship prepped. Lieutenant Pfeiffer's already suited up at the antenna, getting ready to align it. You know... Sometimes when I'm out here, I turn off the headlights, and turn off the static on the radio, and I let my eyes adjust to the dark. It takes a long time, and there's nothing but stars overhead. Even after I've adjusted, everything is so dark, so hard to see, that all I mostly do is sit in one place. I think to myself, you, you see things differently without the lights, things you might miss if they're in shadow. You, you've got this quality now, that, this thing that blinds you from everything except what you want to hear, deafens you, I guess. Not a perfect analogy. What do you think you see that I'm missing? Mm. I won't know unless you tell me. It's just... People like to come out here. They don't always have our interests at heart. What are you talking about? They can do things, things you wouldn't believe. You're jumping to conclusions. So why did they send her and Piper here? It, it's extremely fishy, the timing. Tell me you trust them. I... If there's anything you know... Just... I'm not sure how to explain it. How long have you known me, Dick? I don't know. A while? A while plus a day? <laughs> a while plus a day. Yeah. I'd think in that time you'd know that you can trust me. It's not about that. It's, I'm not... You're gonna think I'm crazy if you don't see it yourself. I'm listening. No. No. Uh, sorry. It, it, it's all conjecture. If this isn't helping anyone, I'll shut up. You sure? Yeah. DJ King. Hey, Chief, is Dr. Bartholome at the first telescope yet? Sorry, Jane. Uh, Bartholome, are you at the telescope yet? Nearly. What's up? Well, the feed is all ready to go live, but the fanny pack still isn't responding. Nuts. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. I know. I just wanted one thing to work when we came up here. What are the odds that literally every step along the way we would break something else? Something must have gone catastrophically wrong. These are all unrelated systems. Anything I can do from the array? If you want to hang out out there a little while longer. Gordon left me with about a hundred ideas what may go wrong with it, but... That sounds part of the course for him. But I'm starting to think we just have to take all the connections down and start from scratch. Ah, uh, Pfeiffer's patented popcorn maker approach. The Elorians are still transmitting, though, yeah? Yeah, no one's touched the transmission. The prime numbers and stuff? Something like that. Golden record kind of data. This shouldn't affect the receivers, though. That sucks, Jane. I'm grabbing the hard drives from the Array Hub regardless. I don't know what you think you're going to find. Whatever's on there might be useful. And it sounds like we've got time to process the data by hand now. Do we have several hundred centuries free now? That's how long it'll take by hand. You get the last analyzed data before the whole shebang went down? Why? We're just checking. Something in the radio emissions 
could have fried the entire thing. I've seen techno signatures do weirder things. Oh, the timing is suspicious. Exactly. But the breaks the death transfer the same morning Earth shatter goes down? Something in the data buffer that connects the two. There's no way the two things are connected. Until they are. Richard, you might as well just come back in when you've grabbed those hard drives. I'm going to have Gordon take a look at things after we've done with the launch. No problem. I was going to turn down a little joyride anyway. I've got a hot second to review the station recordings now, at least. Mm. Was wondering when you were going to collect these archives. I keep kicking them whenever I try and turn around. You better not be kicking my work, Mao, or I'll have you relive every moment to get them back on tape. Oh, you might want to wait a bit, actually. We're doing the launch shortly, so I want... Hang on. Come in, Chief. I'm ready in the jump shit. How's our timetable looking? Hey, right on cue. Timetable is looking the same, Commander. No word from Moira, though. Well, I'm not doing the math again, so we're doing the launch on schedule. Sounds like a plan. Uh, hey, Commander, it's Dr. Bartleby. To what do I owe the pleasure, Doctor? Any luck in connecting with Moira from the jump ships? I tried for a good hour during our last window. Got nothing. How curious. If the Chief hasn't heard anything, the odds of them answering here weren't great either. Hmm. I'd really prefer we get their clearance before we do this. Like a broken record all damn week. We don't need their clearance, Dick. I give my clearance. Andreas gives her clearance. This course is set. It'll take another day for the Chinese satellite to be in position again. I didn't realize we don't have another day to kill while we wait around here to be left in the dust. Just finish up and bring the rover in. We'll talk when you get back. What are you... Are you gonna tune him out? Ooh. That was cold, Mal. You didn't have to do that. He was being counterproductive. We have a job to do here, Dr. Weathers. I've heard out Bartholomew enough times, but this is what we're doing now, and I'm going up now. There's still time if you want to borrow Gordon to join you, Commander. Lord knows he'd love to take a break from the station. <laughs> He's better at the antenna. It's just one little errand and not 15. Good point. He'd try to completely rejigger the whole satellite. And we're all set to launch, commencing pre-flight systems checklist. We are set here, patching through to Pfeiffer. Chief Reese to Lieutenant Pfeiffer, how you doing at the antenna? Everything safe is over here. Great, if you've got that under control, then we can get the commander up in the air. How are things looking on your end, ma'am? Like a piece of cake, Chief. Awesome. Cut me a slice. Cake's all around when you're back. It's all routine on my end. Just give the word. Pfeiffer? There was a loose cable in the connection relay earlier, but I fixed that. Great. If it's all the same to you, then let's get this show on the road. Commander, you've done this a thousand times before. <laughs> that sounds roughly accurate. Take us through the launch sequence. Okay. Pre-flight systems check is complete. Thruster status is nominal. Board is green. All systems go for liftoff. All green here as well. Cleared for liftoff in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Starting ignition five, sequence. 4. Godspeed and good flying. Blast off. All systems are normal, Chief. Down super from here. Trajectory is live to the satellite. We're straight on course. No complaints here. Signal is strong. How's she flying? Like a knife through softened butter. It's nice to stretch my wings and just... I didn't catch that, Andreas. Care to repeat? Something wrong, Commander? Commander Andreas, come in. Can you hear me? Is it supposed to do that? No, the jump ship should still be in range. Try connecting again. 
Marina, you there? We're having trouble reading you. Please come in. Commander Andreas, what the fuck? Something may be up with her radio. With how meticulous that woman is, I doubt it. You said you fixed a cable, Gordon? Uh, yeah, when we started planning. It was literally the first thing on my checklist. And it shouldn't even affect her connection at this range anyway. Why is literally everything on this mission broken? She's probably just gone out of range, and we didn't anticipate that. You said the trajectory wasn't supposed to take her out of range. I don't fucking know. Is she on a different channel? I'm looking. J Jane, tell him I am looking. Just trying to help. You know, stop it. Being frank, Lieutenant, I don't need you to tell me how to do my job. No one's saying that, Mal. You know, for all I know, you're fixing the cable is what caused this. A loose cable wouldn't cause her to vanish from the screen. Okay, okay, let's all calm down. For all we know, it's nothing. And she'll just have to do her job in radio silence. That's what we've been doing all week. We're pros at this by now. Right. So, she'll, she'll get to the satellite in a couple of minutes, and I'll be able to pick her up from the antenna and get it aligned. Is the satellite still receiving us? Probably. Let me check. It looks fine on our end. Uh, test, test. She sells seashells by the seashore. Receiving, all right. Good. All we can do right now is wait anyway. The commander knows what she's doing. Oh, Bartholomew is trying to radio in. Ignore him, he's just going to get you heated. He might have a visual on the jump ship from the rover. Uh, that's true. Yep, patch him through, actually, Chief. Oh. Well, let me have it, Dick. Dr. Brothelman? No. Actually, this this is in his channel. Is it? Commander Andreas, are you there? Commander, I can't understand you. Can you adjust your channel? Is everything all right? I don't think that's her. What the hell is that? I think it's coming from the Chinese satellite. So she did it. We're all set. Marina's on the case! There's no way she could have gotten up there that fast. Or connected us with their radio transmitter already. I haven't seen anything from the antenna that would dictate anything's changed. Are you aligning with it, Gordon? Trying to. So... So who is that? Was the connection already open? I don't see how it could have been. Well, something is there now. Look at the signature. Chief Spindler, come in. This is Reese. We've contacted you over the Chinese satellite. I don't think this is Moira. And who the hell is it? Is that... Is it Chinese? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I can't get anything clearer than this. There's no way Andreas did this. Is it... Hello, Mission Control. This is Chief Reese at Arroway Station. We've been out of communication with you for six days. Can you hear me? Please respond. You really think it's her? I don't know. Who else could it be? What if... Guys, what if it's intelligent life? Tune in next week for Chapter 4 of Fine-Tuned Universe. Thank you for joining us for this virtual event. While the shadow of the ongoing COVID-19 crisis darkens our stage for the time being, Quieter Theatre is over the moon to be able to bring a small piece of that stage to you, and we look forward to seeing you in person again soon. If you enjoyed this performance, please consider supporting local artists with a tax-deductible donation at flatearttheatre.com contribute, or click the button in Facebook Live. Flatter Theatre is a federally recognized nonprofit 501c3 corporation. Fine-Tuned Universe was written by A. Lermert for Flat Earth Theatre and directed by Jake Scotrito. 
The cast featured Juliet Bowler as Chief Mallory Reese, Kristen Hyder as Dr. Jane Weathers, Chris Champa as Lieutenant Gordon Pfeiffer, James Hayward as Dr. Richard Dick Barthelme, Melissa De Jesus as Commander Marina Andreas, and Liz Salazar as Chief Bettina Spindler. Sound effects were designed by James Rossi, with technical direction by Lee Downs. For more information about Flat Earth Theater, visit flatearththeater.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for being here, Moon Children. Until next week, watch out for those itty-bitty craters.